Hi everybody, welcome today and thank you for attending today's webinar on effective user permission management in Business Central. My name is Danusha Jolliffe and I'll be facilitating the session today. Um, for those of you who haven't met me before, I'm the marketing director here at T-Vision and I've been with the business for about five years. Um, I've got about 20 years marketing experience. Alongside me as always is Ian, uh, Ian Robinson, one of the senior support desk consultants who's been with Division probably about six months longer than me. And uh, he's got a vast wealth of BC experience and who no doubt you'll have spoken to if you've ever been in touch with support. So before we get started, I'd just like to remind you, we've got the question and chat boxes available for you to ask any questions. I'll be monitoring them and I'll, I'll ask in the questions as, they go, as we go along. If we weren't out of time and you have any further questions that need uh, to be answered, we can do that offline for you. Um, so on to the agenda of what we'll be talking about today. So just as an overview, uh, first of all, uh, Ian will talk about the naming convention regarding user permissions. So that's the role centre and role and full and team and just an explanation there and an overview. Um, why indeed you need to set up user permissions for your organisation. Um, and he'll talk a bit there around uh, how you can segregate duties and the relevance of the size of your organisation and in respect to user permissions. And then finally, he'll do a, a demo around the examples of how you can assign permissions. And you can do that in three ways, whether you use an existing one, uh, whether you tweak one that already exists or whether you record a new one. Um, so with that, I'll pass over to Ian. And as I said, uh, I'll be monitoring the chat. So do ask some questions in the chat or the question box. Ian, over to you. All right, thanks, Danusha. Uh, let me just bring this up. Okay, hi guys. Um, so, permissions. This is not going to be exciting. I, I, I tried to think of ways of making this exciting. I can't. Um, <laughs> it's not like creating a, a report or an account schedule where people can see what you've done. There's some result. This is all in the background. Um, and there's no glory in doing this, but it is something that's really important yeah. for your organization. Why is it important? Um, particularly if you're an organization where you're audited on an annual basis. Um, your auditors are going to ask questions about who has permission to do this, who can do that. Is anybody able to raise a purchase order and receive the goods? and change the vendor's bank account and make the payment because that's opening your company up to fraud if somebody can do all of those things. So it becomes important when your organization starts growing. When you're a small little organization, maybe it's you and your partner, your wife, your son, daughter, whatever it might be, and you've got a business, you trust each other, you know each other, you've both got a vested interest in making things work properly. But when you've grown and you've got 100 employees, you need to start segregating those duties um, to protect yourself and to meet um, compliance requirements, especially if you've got government contracts, defense department contracts, things like that as well. So it is really important that you get it right as your company grows. Um, there are a few places where um, permissions are affected within Business Central and within NAV. Um, and first one is, what type of license do you have or what type of license does the user have? If you have a full license, you're a full user, you can be given permission to do just about anything on the system. If you're a Teams member, you've got a limited license or Teams license, that license itself, it restricts what you're able to do. So even if you're given permission to do everything, the license itself won't let you do everything. So that's the first place where permissions start being affected. The second place is your role center. So that's the screen that you get when you log on. So you can see I've logged on here, I've logged on as a business manager, and I get menu options applicable to me. This isn't my permissions. This is just the way my screen looks. Um, it's not restricting me. Just because there isn't a menu item up here that says um, journals, doesn't mean I'm not able to go and look at journals. I can always go and search for them and I can find journals. So my role center or my profile, that just affects the way my screen looks. I can do a limited little bit of um, permission setting here. I can 
modify, I can create new profiles or role centers. I can put on them the menus that I want and I can make them uneditable. I can restrict them that the users can't personalize their view. But that's not a good way of doing your security. Because even if I personalize this and I try and hide everything that lets you post a sales order, there'll be somewhere in the background on some screen that I didn't think of where there's a button to post a sales order. My end user, eventually, they'll find that button and they'll be able to press it. So this is not where I would set up security by giving my users specific screens. We set it up using permission sets. So there are three kind of areas within BC that specifically deal with user permissions. Right, the first one is an area called permission sets. And if we just go and have a look there, at permission sets. This is an out of the box um, Business Central SAS, and these are all the permission sets that Microsoft give us out of the box. And these are all very generic. So there's an accounts receivable that I'm hovering over. So this is what Microsoft thinks for a typical company. These are the permissions that somebody in accounts receivable would need. In my company, in your company, I might have a different idea than Microsoft. So within this one, I know from experience, an accounts receivable permission set, it lets me create a new customer. It lets me modify customers, it lets me um, post journals, it lets me do all sorts of things. Perhaps in my organization, my accounts receivable team, I don't want them creating customers. I might have a customer onboarding team who do that as a separate um, group of people. So I might not be happy with these out of the box permission sets. You can tweak these permission sets, you can create your own permission sets, or if you're a small business, um, like I said, you know, it's just two, three of you, you might be happy to use these very generic permission sets. But as your company grows, you're going to want to start taking more notice of these and refining your permissions and being a little bit more strict. So permission sets is the first idea we need to speak to. And each one of these permission sets, if I assign it to a user, gives that user permission to do something on the system. The next kind of idea is the idea of a user group. And if we just search for user groups, and a user group, um, it's not a group of users, it's a group of permission sets. So it's a, it's a bit of a strange naming convention that Microsoft has gone with here. So these are all user groups that already exist on the system. I did create a few new ones myself down here. Um, I'll Ian, open up. Yeah. So why have you put the TVT at the beginning? Okay, so um, that's just a convention that I use and um, it's, it's not a bad idea. All of the ones that start with TVT, I know they're the ones that I've created for T-Vision technology. All the ones that start with D365, they're the ones that Microsoft have given me out of the box. It just makes it really easy for me to identify my customized stuff on the yes. system. Um, so if I look at this TVT debtors and I say, what permissions does it have? These are the permission sets on the previous screen that I've just put into a generic group. So I think somebody who's working in my debtors department, you might call, call it accounts receivable department, I think they need these permission sets. So I've just kind of grouped them together and that's gonna make my life a little bit easier on the third screen that we need to look at. And this is the last one. I'll try and make it more interesting after this. Um, and this is the users screen. So this is where you set up your users and this is where you assign permissions to users. So on this company, I've got a few users here. Um, I'm demo admin. Let's look at my setup. And within demo admin, when it opens up, come on, there we are. So up at the top in typical business central fashion, it's a little bit slow for some reason. Um, it's going to give me my name, um, what type of license I have, whether I'm enabled, information like that. 
And then down here, these are the permissions that I have in two sections. The first section, which user groups do I belong to? And secondly, which specific permission sets do I have access to? So I can give permissions either by assigning groups to a user, or I can give permissions by assigning permission sets to a user, or I can do a combination of both. I can do some groups and then tweak it by adding an extra permission set down here, perhaps. But this is the, all the areas we need to look at, permission sets, user groups, and users. Um, and I think the best way for me to um, go through this is perhaps give you a simple example. So I'm going to imagine I'm a, a reasonably small company. Um, Grady has just joined our company. Um, my partners have uh, set up Grady as a user. They've given him a license. And again, it's a little bit slow, but I'm going to see it up here. It's enabled. He's got a valid license. But he doesn't have any permissions. I haven't assigned him to any groups. I haven't given him any permission sets. So because I'm a small company, I might be very happy to just say that Grady is a super user. And if I give Grady super, this role has all permissions. If Grady is my son, I might be happy to give him that. As I say, if I've got 100 employees, I would be very reluctant to give somebody super permission unless they were the head of finance or the head of the IT department or something like that. So for a really small company, by all means, give super permission. And of course, my buttons aren't working. Let me try that. Just want to delete that line and start again from fresh. More realistically, I'm still a small company. Grady's working um, in my finance department. Let me see if I've got a group to do with finance. I do, I've got a group called accountants and this is one that Microsoft have given us by default. I'm happy perhaps with the Microsoft defaults. I'm giving him the accountants group, which has various permission sets assigned to it. As soon as I click off this line, I'll see those permission sets that I've granted to Grady appear down here. But also very important, I've only given Grady access to the Fresh Start Trading Company. On my system, I have four companies. I can give Grady different permissions in each company. If I want him to have the same permissions in all companies, I can just remove that restriction there. And yes, I want it to update everything. And that's removed the restriction here. So now Grady is an accountant on all companies on my system. And it's as easy as that to set up a new user. What might happen more typically, uh, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this again so it's blank. Somebody new starts in your company and it's a little bit more complicated than I just demonstrated. A good question to ask is, what job is Grady going to be doing? Oh, he's going to be doing the same work as Alex then a good idea, come into Alex's profile, see what permissions I've given to Alex. Again, when it opens up, and I'll be able to see what we have assigned to Alex. Oh, he's got all users and debtors. He's got my customized rules. I'm assuming that Alex is male, might be a female. Um, and these are the permission sets. I can use a record store package to move these across. I can edit in Excel to move them across. I can just copy and paste or take a screenshot. Go back to Grady's code. And when I'm in Grady's code, give him all users and give him debtors. So it's a good way of doing this is who else has a similar role or the same role and copy those settings. It saves you having to memorize what everything does. Because there are quite literally 
um, as we saw earlier, dozens upon dozens of commission sets. They all have a very brief description, but it doesn't give you a lot of detail of exactly what type of banking does it let you do. Does it let you look at bank accounts? Does this one let you create new bank accounts? Post bank transfers, um, record deposits, make payments, etc. The description is a little bit vague. If I really want to know what this permission set does, I would go up to the ribbon. Hello. Ah, I'm on the wrong screen. Sorry. I would go to the permission sets page. We all make mistakes. Once I've made one, I'll make lots. <laughs> So I go to the permission sets page and on the permission sets page I find banking. Uh, where was it? There it is. And I can say what permissions does banking have? And I click on that permissions button. And this is where it starts looking a little bit complicated, a little bit scary and a little bit hard to read, to be honest. But this is basically telling me anyone who has banking permission. On the currency table, they're allowed to read it. They're allowed to modify what they see. They're not allowed to insert a new currency. They're not allowed to delete a currency that already exists. On a GL account, I can see all the GL accounts. I have read permission. I can't create new ones. I can't modify existing ones. I can't delete them. GL entries, I can see them. I can insert them and modify them indirectly by posting a journal or something like that. Um, coming further down, within a journal itself, I can see the lines, I can insert new lines directly by typing them in, I can modify them, I can delete them. So this tells you exactly what this role is able to do. It's a little bit hard to read. But once you kind of get the idea of those are the columns, these are the areas within the system, it becomes a bit easier. There are a lot of tables that the banking rule lets you get access to. The ones at the top are generally the most important ones. Things like customers, vendors, GL accounts, general ledger entries, custom ledger entries sales documents. They all got pretty low numbers. When you get up to a thousand, they're much more specialized areas within the system, looking at swift codes and pay entries and things like that. So pay very close attention to the ones at the top of the list. You can give a little bit of ten less attention to the ones further down. They're still worth looking at, but really these are the ones that are truly important to you and you really care about and your boss cares about as well. So we've talked about permission sets. Let to see what a permission set can do. We've talked about user groups, which is a collection of permission sets. Users, you can give them user groups or you can give them permission sets directly. And we did mention the super permission set, which you really should avoid giving to people, except for perhaps two, maybe three users within your organization, just in case someone's on leave, because super can do anything without restriction. Um, yeah. How would, yeah. Well, we had a question come in saying, when should uh, our clients be doing this? Okay. So obviously, when you go, before you go live, not when you go live, before you go live, you want to have your security set up on your user acceptance testing system or your test system. You need to be setting up these permission sets. If you want any customized ones, setting up your user groups, if you're not happy with the defaults, um, making sure that they work, letting those users log on with those permissions, making sure that they can do their job. Once you've gone live, it's nice, it's stable for a while, but after a couple of years, people have left, people have joined, somebody's been given extra access to do something, somebody got access taken away because they, 
they were naughty and they broke something, whatever it might be. And it starts looking a lot less organized. So you really should, once a year, at the absolute minimum, do a review, do a review yeah. be having a look. If you're an audited company, your auditors are going to force you to do this anyway by asking you awkward questions. Um, yeah, so if, if you wanted to create a new user group, you would simply search for user groups and you would say new. If you want to create a new permission set from scratch, you can come in here and you can say new. Or you could take one of these and say banking, you think it's about right, but you want to change it a little bit. You can make a copy of the permission set and you can change the permission set. I'm going to show you how to create a new permission set. So I'm just going to create one and I'm going to call my new permission set demo. Um, and demo can only do sales orders. You'll notice it's flagged as a user defined permission set. So this means when a wave update happens or your system is upgraded, Microsoft are not going to overwrite what you've done here. These system created ones here that Microsoft gives you by default in the next wave update, they might modify them slightly because of new functionality or functionality that's been taken away. Um, so there's always a risk that what you think it can do, it might change in the future, which is why we do recommend create your own even if it's just a copy of, a, of the existing ones, because you will know it's going to stay static. It's not going to change unless you know about it. Once I've created a new permission set, I say, okay, what permissions does this permission set have? It should have no permissions because I just created it. I can manually assign permissions to this permission set. Um, if I click here, I can choose which table do I want to give permission to. Perhaps I want to give permission to the currency table. I would select that and then I would say whether it has read permission, can they insert, modify, delete. And I can choose no, they can't. Yes, they can, or they can only do it indirectly by posting the document. It gets really complicated. You saw how many permissions there were in the permission set we were looking at just now. The best way to create a new permission set is to record one. And let me demonstrate that to you now. So I only want this permission set to be able to open sales orders and just look at a sales order. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pop this screen out so it opens on a separate page. And this went a lot faster when I was practicing yesterday <laughs> and this morning. Um, and as soon as it's popped out here, oh dear, the joys of doing things live, I'm going to click start to start recording. It's going to ask me to confirm I want to record what I'm doing. And then I'll come back to this screen and I will search for sales orders. I will open a sales order or open the sales order list rather. I do apologize for the squirrel system. Um, I'm going to just open any one of these orders just to see what's inside the order. And as soon as this is opened, that's as much as I want this permission set to do. Just open an order and see what's inside it. So I will come back to that screen that popped out and I will say stop recording. Do I want to add these permissions? Yes, I do. And to do what I just did, to search for the sales orders, to see them and to open one of them up, these are all the tables that I needed read access to. To have done that yourself from scratch by typing them in, it would have taken you forever. So the record functionality is really good. It's given me exactly the permission I need and no more. It's not letting me insert, modify, delete because while I was recording, I didn't insert, I didn't modify, and I didn't delete. Ian, we just also had another question saying, how can I stop people from adding direct debit mandates via NAV? So is that an example that would work as well? Is that doable? That is doable. So if you've got people 
adding direct debit mandates, um, they're accessing a table and they have insert permission on that table. You just need to figure out which table is it that they're accessing and, and remove, remove the their insert permission. How do you want to know which table that is? Well, um, I'm on a sales order here. If I press Alt Control F1 on most computers, or I'm scared of using keyboard shortcuts and I like to do things the long way, I can say Open Support, and it should pop up a new window where I can inspect this page, and it tells me a new little window is going to pop up on the side here. Please pop up. Yep, there it is. I'm on a sales header. So if I don't want this user to be able to view sales headers, I would go back to their permission set and I would remove the view access for sales header. If I don't want them inserting a new one, I would remove the insert permission on the sales header. So you can always see exactly which table it is, and there's the number 36, and you will have noticed on the permission sets that it didn't just have the name, it had that number as well. You can use either of them. My system seems to be getting even slower. Um, once we've set up permissions, and you know, it's, it's been a year or two, and we want to start having a review, or the auditors are asking some awkward questions, and they say, what permissions does Alex have? Well, I can come into Alex's user code. And the first place we can see on his user code is which groups he belongs to, and more specifically, those groups give permission sets. It's getting there. So I can say, oh, he's got permissions to do all of these things. But I can be even more specific. And I can say, well, all of these permissions down here, effectively, what do they allow Alex to do? So I click on the effective permissions. It's building a report for me. Uh, this takes about 30 seconds. Um, but this is going to tell me every table within the system that Alex can access and what kind of permissions he has on that table. And also underneath the tables, it's going to tell me which pages Alex can see, which reports Alex can run, um, which code units Alex can run. So it's going to give me very specific information about what Alex can do. Uh, we've also had another question. Um, if you've got an add-on, for example, continued document capture, can you give permissions on that as well? Yes, you can. Um, so document capture, that has its own tables in the background. And when you install that um, document capture, it has its own permission sets that it creates on your system that you can assign to users. Document capture, all of the permission sets start with the letters CDC continue document capture. Um, document output all start with CDO. Um, any TVT customizations we've done for you, let's start with TVT, just so you know where they come from. Uh, coming back to Alex, I clicked on effective permissions and it is showing me every table that Alex can access and what kind of permission Alex has. And if I click on currency, for example, it's gonna change at the bottom so for currency, Alex can read, insert, modify, and delete. He gets read permission from all of these different permission sets. His insert permission, he gets it from this permission set and this permission set. And his delete permission also comes from this permission set and this permission set. So I can see what Alex is allowed to do on my system and which of the permission sets that I've assigned to Alex give Alex that permission. So this is very useful for answering questions or for doing a bit of analysis yourself. There's another useful place to have a look and that's permission set by user. And this is a different view of permissions on your system. Um, this is gonna give us a kind of a matrix view. So down the left, we will see all the permission sets that exist on my system and across the top, we'll see all the users on my system. 
and we're going to see which users have been assigned which permissions. And then I'm almost at the end, fortunately, because my system is getting really slow. So I can see demo admin, that's me. I have edit in Excel view. I have export to Excel. I can see that um, Andrea has got nothing. If I scroll down far enough, I'll eventually find the things that Andrea has access to. And the same things for Grady. Remember, we didn't set him up with anything. We deleted all the permissions. But Alex, I can see exactly what Alex has. So I can look at it per user, what do they have? Or I can say permission sets, who has the um, super permission? Oh, only two users, demo admin and another user called Ian. That's not me, that's, that's my alter ego. Um, so again, this is a very useful report to give to an auditor. If you're looking at it on your screen, you probably have a lot more columns than me. Sometimes you can't see them all. There is an option, I think it's under process, to move the screen to the right. No, it shows the wrong one. It's under browse. I can go to the right, go to the left, show new columns for my new users. So this is a good way of auditing who has permission to what. Uh, one that I have mentioned a couple of times is super. Super can do anything on the system. Super can run any report, can post anything, can run any code unit. You really do not want all your users to have super permission. You want one user and a backup, or two users and a backup to have this permission. Um, there are another two um, permission sets to really keep a close eye on. Um, another one is called Super Data and the one called security which lets that user assign permissions to other users so super super data and security you really want to limit who gets access to those the other ones don't have as much power but you still need to be careful my recommendation to you is if you have the time or if you don't have the time you should really make the time to record permission sets for all the tasks that you want your users to do. And then you know exactly what that permission set does because you created it from scratch, rather than trying to guess what the Microsoft ones do. If you really want to know what a Microsoft permission set does, the only way is to drill in and see what the permissions are. If you go and search online for documentation, you're not gonna find anything. Sadly, this is very poorly documented on Microsoft. And a lot of the stuff that you get from other people, it's outdated um, because these permissions do change from time to time. So you might find an article that's two years old that says, oh, this permission set can do this. In those two years, Microsoft might have changed that. So the information that you can find online is a little bit unreliable and I would not trust it 100%. That's why I say create your own permission sets create your own user groups and then you know exactly what's going on and if an auditor asks you you can say with certainty oh this is what that does i know that's what it does because i created it from scratch and finally sometimes you've set up permissions and a user comes to you and says oh it won't let me do x it won't let me look at the general ledger they've got an error message that error message if it says you do not have permission to, the problem is you haven't given them the correct permissions. And immediately after you don't have permission to, it will tell you exactly which table and whether it's read permission, insert permission, delete permission or modify permission that's needed. You need to ask the user or find out should the user be doing this? If they should, you need to go into their permission sets and tweak one of the permission sets to have that permission um, or give them a new permission set which they didn't have. Perhaps they've moved department, nobody told you, and now they should be able to look at customers, but nobody's ever given them permission to look at customers. Maybe you need to give them the um, accounts receivable permission set. So 
the error messages for permissions, they always start with the same few words, you do not have permission to. If you see that, it's a permissions related problem. Um, I think that's everything that I wanted to cover, and I've spent a little bit more time than I should have. Um, but Danusha, do we have any more questions? Um, the only last question we had that we've got time for um, was about uh, what happens if somebody moved, moves departments. We also had another question that I'll get you to answer offline because it's quite in depth. Okay. Um, but yeah, what happens if someone moves departments? Right. So someone moves departments. I was, I was just talking about it, but. Um, if someone moves departments, you've got two choices. Um, you can take away all their permissions and give them new permissions that are relevant to their new job role. Um, and some companies you might like that level of security, or you can choose just to add the new permissions to what they already have. They've both got pros and cons. If you add permissions to what they already have, they can always step over and help their old department if somebody's off sick or something and they've still got permission. That's fantastic. But you've got to be a little bit careful because their old department maybe was the department that was raising purchase orders and the new department is now paying vendors. And now if somebody has permission to raise purchase orders and pay vendors, that segregation of responsibilities, you might be making somebody upset, making the auditors upset making the MD upset perhaps. So you've got to use a bit of common sense um, and decide which approach is best for you. Um, perhaps it should be a company policy of this is the way we're going to do it for everyone. Um, it's worth thinking about. That's pretty much all I had for you guys. Cool, thanks. Back to Denisha. Thanks Ian. Uh, so yeah, so just to finish off then, um, just some things to think about when you're talking about user permissions within your organisation. It's the size of the organisation that needs to be considered. As Ian said, the smaller you are, the super user becomes more relevant. The larger you are, you need to think about what is the access that's required. And he's mentioned several times about having that defined task list for a role. And if you know what people are doing, you know which permissions they need. Um, so we have talked for quite a long time today. I'm surprised, I thought it might be a bit small, shorter, but we've had quite a few questions. So it's obviously a, a subject that people are interested in. If you do have any further um, questions, then, then get in touch. And as I said, there was one question that we'll be answering offline. Um, it needed a bit more detail. So thank you everyone uh, for attending today. As always, the link will be sent out to the recording. I know a few people dropped off. Um, so the full recording will be available. Um, it'll be up on the website in the next 24, 48 hours along with the transcript. Um, do sign up to upcoming webinars in the next few months. Uh, thank you so much for attending today. Thank you, Ian. Yeah, Cheers. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.